the show where there are no penalties, nothing is offside, and everything is fair game. This is The Gloves Are Off. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Gloves Are Off. I'm Moses Wold. We've got a jam-packed show for you. Lots to talk about, including the Lloydminster Bobcats. Before we get to them, we'll talk to these guys as well. My co-host, first and foremost, Andrew Brethauer, the Lloydminster Source. How are you? I'm doing good. Yourself? Not too bad, my friend. It's been an interesting week over the last uh, couple of days. We'll see how the uh, transition goes for a lot of teams, including those same Bobcats. A guy who's familiar with the Bobcats, a guy who's familiar with Lloydminster hockey, period. Pleased to be joined by uh, Kyle Tapp. Of course, you've done a lot of work uh, with uh, IHD. Uh, the, you're the master coach, uh, a company you started, and helped out a lot of kids along the way who are trying to advance in their hockey careers. Glad to have you on. Thanks. I uh, cut my hair and put on some pounds for you, so uh, <laughs> hope I'm looking good on camera. All right. Well, I guess warm and cuddly would yes. be the way yeah, to go. Yeah, that's the look I'm going for. There you go. Yep. Well, maybe the Bobcats, uh, well, necessarily aren't warm and cuddly animals, but interesting to see how the Junior A Bobcats, the on-ice team, uh, does going into this week. 18 kids that are 18 or younger on the roster, and, and you look at uh, what head coach and GM Travis Clayton has said, this is going to be a team that's going to see a lot of growing pains to start off with. With that said, do you think this team does have a chance and, you know, could surprise a few teams going into the season? It's hockey. It's the Alberta Junior Hockey League. The team that's the best prepared, plays as a group, uh, and competes, always be successful. And I think with Austin in net there, um, if he plays his potential, he'll steal a few for them. I think they'll be fine. A lot of turnover in the North Division as well, so there's a lot of first-year coaches that are kind of getting their feet under them. So Trav knows what he's doing. They'll be fine. And I think Travis knows what he's doing. He's, yeah, he's developed that system of being able to get guys to play in a system. So I can't see them being horrible. They're, probably, they're not going to be like last year. They're not going to be breaking franchise records or anything like that, which I think everyone has that expectation it's not going to happen. But, you know, turnover, you know, who knows? Like a lot of young kids with stuff to prove, and when you have things to prove in junior A, you can do a lot of good things. Where did the Bobcats finish at the end of the season? Oh God, <laughs> is that a hard well, question like to ask? Like in the North Division? Yeah, or, in the North. Or yes. At the end of the year. Or? Yeah, in the North. Where do where do they end up? Well, they're definitely going to make the playoffs. Um, I, I I haven't seen enough teams. I don't know what Spruce looks like. I know Bonneville's not off to a great start. Um, Fort Mac looks improved. Grand Prairie looks the same. Know nothing about Shirt Park, so third? It's a toss up. Third, fourth? I think, yeah, they're fighting for that last kind of home playoff spot, which is kind of what we always, we don't talk about making playoffs. Everyone makes playoffs as long as you're not Grand Prairie. And sorry, but. Um, hasn't always been that way. No, it hasn't. And, but there's, there's a few bad, like, worst teams. Drayton Valley's been considered one that's not really done anything this year. So I think they'll be fighting for that kind of final home playoff, that fourth, fifth position. That's what they'll be fighting for. You got a lot of great kids uh, going into week one of the NFL that looked phenomenal uh, in their starts. Uh, Carson Wentz, the Eagles, is one guy who comes to mind. Uh, that hurt the Browns, although it's the Browns. Anybody. Wow, you admitted <laughs> that Browns. finally. Well, like, that's awesome. <laughs> hey, I, like, I, I'm, an op I'm an optimist, but at the same time, I'm a realist. I see how things go. Nevertheless, there are a couple great guys uh, when you look across the board uh, in terms of NFL rookies uh, that started in week one. Is there one in that comes to mind that, I guess, we'll start with you, Andrew, that kind of shone for you. Okay, realist first off. You're the one that said RG3 was going to be like the savior, basically. Whoa, he will be as soon as whoa, he gets back yeah, off the IR. Yeah, exactly. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Well, I never said you that. Were like you were like pushing RG. You were pushing RG all day. I never said that. I was, he showed some signs in training camp, but I never said that this team was going to the promised land or anything, or this guy you was a savior. You said he could at least, anyway, New England. <laughs> Not <laughs> Let's even go close. to New England. Johnny Manziel's coming back at a rehab oh, soon. No, so are you good. saying Garoppolo? Yeah. That's what he did where, with very limited talent. Granted, he has Belichick, which, you know, that can run the whole thing. So did you say rookie quarterbacks? So wasn't there only two? Or first-year quarterbacks. We oh, like first-time starters. Yeah, first-time yeah. starters, oh, I should get into that. Okay. So, so yeah. Garoppolo was, with what was had, one guy. Yeah. That's what I meant, because Garoppolo obviously is not a veteran, but he's been behind uh, the a, greatest a quarterback of all time, yeah. Arguably. So you had that. Then you look at Carson Wentz was another guy who had an impressive one. Uh, how about uh, – how about uh, – I guess Dak, Dak Prescott. Like, it was okay. They managed. Not bad. Out. It wasn't his fault. They lost. He was trying to march his team down to the end, Case except for Keenum, Terrace Williams. Case Keenum was that his first start? Oh, he looked brutal. Yeah, <laughs> they did really well on Monday night. That's, that was that's St. Louis. Watch. That was that was terrible. Um, yeah, it was amazing that one. Okay, Garoppolo in my mind performed the best, um, simply because you're up against top three defense no. in the NFL. That's the Arizona Cardinals. Like, that's a the Super Bowl uh, favorite coming out of the the NFC. 
Um, but you've been behind Tom Brady. You're preparing last year to start, mm -hmm. so you've been through that whole thing before. Uh, you do have Bill Belichick. I thought they managed it really well. That I like, but if you're talking to me most impressive, it's Carson Wentz. Um, out of a Division II program, people thought they reached for him. Um, Chip Kelly leaving Philadelphia, how tough Philadelphia is for him to, to go and, and prove all the naysayers wrong, especially when he wasn't expected to start. Um, I, think, I think Philly hit a home run. And I do like Prescott as well for what he did in yeah. Dallas, considering what that team obviously goes through all the time. And Got to throw it to Des more, like give him more jump balls. But. Yeah, one catch for eight yards. But it gives them something to look hopeful for because I think eventually they got to get to the point where they're going to have to move on from Romo, if not now. And this guy looks like he's a solid yeah. person where, you know, you give him a couple more starts and I don't want to give him the starting job, you know, for the rest of the year and for the rest of his career. But at least now there's not a rolling string of random backups who are just buying off the market to fill the hole until Romo gets back. Yeah, for sure. And then let him and Ezekiel develop some chemistry and maybe have a one-two punch for the next eight years. While some NFL players during the national anthem stood, others decided to kneel or find other ways of protest, including uh, a certain guy with the San Francisco 49ers, Colin Kaepernick. Does protesting the national anthem, on, especially on September 11th, show poor taste on those who refuse to stand? I've hummed and hawed over this whole thing. Like, if you're really trying to draw attention, you know, that's what what bigger anthem other than the, the Super Bowl than, you know, opening opening week, September 11th, you know, the flag, the 100-yard flag um, across the field. Uh, I get I get where they're they're coming from. I, I don't know. It, it, for, it, for me, it's such a hot, hot button issue. I think it's a, an issue that needs to be raised. Um, I think uh, we need to do a better job there um, as a society. Um, but September 11th, like, that's such a huge moment in – in our history, like, I don't know, I don't know. It's like how it just all culminated. I think it was just cringeworthy in essence. And again, I have no problem with, with players and people protesting. Uh, if you look at Brandon Marshall, actually, with the, um, with the, not the Jets, the, not the Jets, Jets, but with the Jets, the Jets but not just Marshall, but uh, Marshall with the Broncos. Broncos. That's what I'm talking about. Middle linebacker. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, how he actually lost sponsorship because of this. Sure. And I'm like. Okay, it makes me, it reminds, I would say it reminds me because I don't remember the time, but looking through history, it, it's very similar to what Muhammad Ali, uh, if you look at Jim Brown, the former sure. Cleveland running back, those guys, Luau Sindor, who was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, those guys protested and ended up hurting their brand. Like, but but it, when, is there, when is there a time to actually say, okay, maybe not, today is not the day? I think right away, especially on that oh. day of all days. You'd think if anything... And we talked about this last week about, you know, the flag means more than just protesting cops and black America that's yeah but it's it's e it's it, easy for us to say we don't live in that yeah. world that world hasn't affected me um, I am trying to see it from a bigger picture and, and say that this has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years and, and enough is enough uh, I guess now that I'm sitting here thinking about it like when when is there not a better time to protest when that many eyes are on and and we're talking about it right now in Lloyd Minster Canada you know, and there's got to be people talking about it all over the world. Uh, I wish they'd maybe come out and, and do a better job of, of, you know, respecting the fallen heroes and, and everything that happened uh, that way. But I, I get it, I guess, is my answer. I get it. I get it. Would I do it differently? Maybe. But I get it. And I just, it's like this, I said last week. Though, uh, last word here. It's just it's when these players are deciding when things are going to get better. It's like I said last week. Now we're losing endorsements. So let's say now this next week he stands for the anthem. Well, is he standing because of his protest was made, did something or because he lost money? This is the problem I have. You better be protesting the whole year. Like, you can't take a break now because that tells that spells something. Or until work, something changes. Which won't happen well, in football that, that, season. It's, it's <laughs> hard, but we'll, it's, it's not just a thing that all of a sudden will change week by week. It's, it's going to be a thing that's going to take generations if, if, that, if, if you're thinking about it in a global scale. We're going to take a, a quick time out when we return. We're going to keep talking about this, but move it to the hockey field or hockey rink in this case. John Tortorella had a few things to say. Uh, we'll hear what he has to say and what these guys have to say coming up.